Dharamdev Pishoramal Anand, the 26th of September 1923 to the 3rd of December 2011, known as Dev Anand, was a noted Indian film actor, writer, director, and producer known for his work in Indian cinema. He is considered as one of the greatest and most successful actors in the Indian film industry. Topic: Early life. Dev was born Dharam Dev Anand on 26 September 1923 in the Shikargar Tessel of the Gurdaspur district in Punjab, British India. His father Pishori Lal Anand was a well-to-do advocate in Gurdaspur district court. Dev was the third of four sons born to Anand. One of Dev's younger sisters is Sheel Kanta Kapur, who is the mother of film director Shikhar Kapur. His older brothers were Manmohan Anand advocate, Gurdaspur Dist. Court and Chetan Anand and the younger one was Vijay Anand. He did his schooling till matriculation from Sacred Heart School, Dalhousie, then in Punjab and went to college in Dharamsala before going to Lahore to study. Later Dev completed a BA degree in English Literature from the Government College, Lahore in British India, part of the Anand family. He co-founded Navkitan Films in 1949 with his elder brother Chetan Anand. Topic. Personal life Dev Anand had a love affair with actress Saraya from 1948 to 1951, but they never married, because of opposition by Saraya's maternal grandmother. Saraya remained unmarried throughout her life till she died on 31 January 2004. In 1954, Dev married Kalpana Kartik actual name Mona Singha, a Bollywood actress from Shimla, in a private marriage during the shooting of the film Taxi Driver. Kartik was Christian. They have two children, Sunil Anand, who is unmarried and Davina Anand Naring. Davina married in 1985, but was divorced a few years later. Davina has a daughter, Gina Naring, born 1986, who is married to a fashion stylist, Prayag Menon. Gina is a professional photographer. Topic: Career. After completing his BA degree in English Literature from the Government College, Lahore, then in British India, now in Pakistan, Devanand left his hometown for Bombay in the early 1940s. He began his career in the military censor's office at Church Gate for a monthly salary of 65 rupees. Later, he worked as a clerk in an accounting firm for a salary of 85 rupees. He joined his older brother, Chetan, as a member of the Indian People's Theatre Association IPTA. Dev Anand aspired to become a performer after seeing Ashok Kumar's performance in films such as Akhut Kanya and Kismet. Dev Anand quoted in an interview that I remember when I gate crashed into the office of the man who gave me the first break, he kept looking at me, Babu Rao Pai of Prabhat Film Studios. At that time he made up his mind that this boy deserves a break and later mentioned to his people that this boy struck me because of his smile and beautiful eyes and his tremendous confidence. Then he was soon offered the lead role in Prabhat Films Hum Ek Hain a film about Hindu-Muslim unity, where Dev Anand played a Hindu boy and was paired opposite Kamala Khatnas. While shooting the film in Pune, Anand befriended the actor Guru Dutt. Between them, they agreed that if one of them were to become successful in the film industry, he would help the other also to be successful. They formed a mutual understanding that when Anand produced a film, Dutt would direct it and when Dutt directed a film, Anand would act in it. Topic late 1940s and romance with Saraya In the late 1940s, Anand was offered a few roles starring as the male lead opposite singer-actress Saraya in woman-oriented films. While shooting these films, they became romantically involved. The two of them were paired in seven films together, Vidya 1948, Jeet 1949, Cher 1949, Afsar 1950, Neely 1950, Dusatare 1951, and Sanam 1951, all of which were successful at the box office. In these films, Saraya was always first biller in the credits, indicating that she was a bigger star than Anand. She fell in love with him during the shooting of the song Kinner Kinner Chael J and J from the film Vidya. While shooting the scene, the boat they were in capsized, and Anand saved Saraya from drowning. 
Initially, Saraya's family used to welcome Deva Nand at home, but when her maternal grandmother found out that the two were in love, and even planned an actual marriage on the set of Jeet, she started monitoring them. The two shared love letters and messages through their co-actors, like Durga Koat and Kamini Kaushal, who went out of their way to engineer secret rendezvous. During the shooting of the film Afsar Anand finally proposed to Saraya and gave her a diamond ring worth 3,000 rupees. Her maternal grandmother opposed the relationship as they were Muslim and Anand was Hindu, and so, Saraya remained unmarried. They stopped acting together after her grandmother opposed their partnership, and Du Sitare was the last film in which they appeared together. Although the films he starred in with Saraya had been successful, the producers and directors of those films attributed their success to the acting prowess and screen presence of Saraya. Anand began looking for an opportunity to play the main male lead in a film where his acting skills could be demonstrated, so as to dispel skepticism about his acting abilities. Dev Anand often spoke about Saraya and his love affair with her. In various interviews he gave to film magazines, such as Star Dust, June 1972 issue, Star and Style, February 1987 issue, and TV to Karen Thapar for BBC, 2002, while both were alive, and after Saraya's death in interviews given on TV to Simi Garawal, Rendezvous with Simi Garawal, and others on TV and for news magazines. Topic. Break in the 1950s Anand was offered his first big break by Ashok Kumar. He spotted Anand hanging around in the studios and picked him as the hero for the Bombay Takis production Zidi co-starring Kamini Kaushal, which became an instant success. After Zidi's success, Anand decided that he would start producing films. It was in the film Zidi, where the first ever Kishore Lada duet Ye Khan Aaya Kark Ye Sola Singar was recorded. This duet was an instant hit, and from here on both playback singers' associations with Dev Anand began. This continued for the next four decades. His association with Kishore Kumar started when the former sang the first solo of his playback singing career, Marn Ki Duayan, picturized on Dev Anand in the movie Zidi. Dev had forged a very strong bond of friendship with Kishore Kumar during the making of the film. In 1949, he launched his own company Navkeaton Films, named after his elder brother Chetan's son Keaton and which means, New Banner, which, as of 2011, has produced 35 films. Dev chose Guru Dutt as director for the crime thriller, Bazi, 1951. The film, starring Dev Anand, Gita Bali and Kalpana Kartik was a trendsetter, regarded as the forerunner of the spate of urban crime films that followed in Bollywood in the 1950s. The film Bazi saw the debut of Kalpana Kartik aka Mona Singha as the lead female actress and Guru Dutt as a director. The collaboration was a success at the box office and the duo of Dev Anand and Kalpana Kartik were offered many films to star in together. They signed all the film offers and subsequently the movies Andean 1952, Taxi Driver 1954, House Number no. 44 1955 and Now Do Jira 1957 went on to become big hits too. During the making of the film Taxi Driver, the couple fell in love and Dev proposed marriage to his heroine Kalpana. In 1954, Taxi Driver was declared a hit and the two decided to marry in a quiet ceremony. The couple had a son, Sunil Anand in 1956 and later a daughter, Davina, was born. After her marriage, Kalpana decided not to pursue her acting career further. Now Do Jira was the couple's last movie together. A rapid-fire style of dialogue delivery and a penchant for nodding while speaking became Dev's style in films such as House No. 44 1955, Pocket Mar 1956, Munim G 1955, Fatouche 1956, CID 1956, and Paying Guest 1957. In the 1950s his films were of the mystery genre or light comedy love stories or were films with social relevance such as Ek Kbaad Ek and Fatouche His style was lapped up by the audience and was widely imitated. He starred in a string of box office successes for the remainder of the 1950s opposite newcomer Wahida Rahman in CID Solva Saul Kala Bazaar and Baat Ek Riyat Ki Wahida first became a star when CID became a hit. 
The pair acted in Roop Ki Rani Koran Ka Raja and Prem Pujari later. In 1955, he also co-starred with Dilip Kumar in Insaniyat. With his acting in Kala Pani 1958, as the son who is willing to go to any lengths to clear his framed father's name, he won his first Filmfare Award for Best Actor for the film. He attempted films of tragic genre occasionally, such as Pocket Mar 1956, Kala Pani 1958, Bombay Ka Babu 1960, and Sharabi 1964, and tasted success with them. Dev also played a few characters with a negative shade, as in Jal 1952, where he played a smuggler, then as an absconding gang member in Dushman, and as a black marketer in Kala Bazaar. Apart from his pairing with Saraya and Kalpana Kartik, his pairing with Newton and Wahida Rahman was popular among the audiences in the late 50s and 60s. His films Rahi 1952 and Andean 1952 were screened along with Raj Kapoor's Awara. From the early 50s till mid-60s, the trio of Dilip Kumar, Raj Kapoor and Dev Anand ruled the roost. <laughs> Romantic hero image in the 1960s In the 60s, Dev Anand acquired a romantic image with films such as Manzil and Tere Gar K. Samni with Newton, Kinar Kinar with Meena Kumari, Maya with Mala Sinha, Asli Naikli with Sadhana Shivdasani, Jab Pyar Kisi Se Hoda Hey, Mahal with Asha Parekh and Teen Devayan opposite three heroines Kalpana, Simi Garawal and Nanda. In the film Teen Devayan, Dev Anand played a playboy. His first color film, Guide with Wahida Rahman was based on the novel of the same name by R. K. Narayan. Dev Anand himself was the impetus for making the film version of the book. He met and persuaded Narayan to give his assent to the project. Dev Anand tapped his friends in Hollywood to launch an Indo-US co-production that was shot in Hindi and English simultaneously and was released in 1965. Guide, directed by younger brother Vijay Anand, was an acclaimed movie. Dev played Raju, a voluble guide, who supports Rosie Wahida in her bid for freedom. He is not above thoughtlessly exploiting her for personal gains. Combining style with substance, he gave an affecting performance as a man grappling with his emotions in his passage through love, shame and salvation. He reunited with Vijay Anand for the movie Jewel Thief, based on the thriller genre which featured Vijayanthamala, Tanuja, Anju Mahendru, Faryal and Helen and was very successful. Their next collaboration, Joni Mara Nam, 1970, again a thriller, in which Dev was paired opposite Hema Malini was a big hit. It was Johnny Mara Nam which made Hema Malini a big star. In 1969, he was a member of the jury at the 6th Moscow International Film Festival. <laughs> Directorial debut and the versatile hero image in 1970s His directorial debut, the espionage drama Prem Pujari, was a flop but has developed a cult following over the years. The film introduced Zahida and had Wahida Rahman as the lead female artiste. He tasted success with his 1971 directorial effort, Hare Rama Hare Krishna which talked about the prevalent hippie culture. His find Zenat Aman, who played the mini-skirt sporting, pot-smoking Janice, became an overnight sensation. Dev also became known as a filmmaker of trenchantly topical themes. The same year, he starred with Mumtaz in Tere Mir Sapni, an adaptation of A. J. Cronin's novel, The Citadel. The film was directed by Dev's brother, Vijay and was also successful. In 1971 he paired again with Zahida in Gambler which went on to become a success. In the 1970s, Raj Kapoor started playing roles of fathers in films such as Kal Aj Aur Kal in 1971 and Dharam Karam in 1974 and had put on a lot of weight in films with Dilip Kumar as lead hero like Dastan and Barag were failures at the box office. Some of the hurriedly made films with Dev Anand as the leading man, Three each opposite Hema Malini, Sharif Bidmash, Jane Man, Joshila and two with Zenat Aman, ISHQ ISHQ ISHQ, Prem Shastra and Saheb Bahadur with Priya Rajvanch, became flops and posed a threat to his career as leading man. He bounced back with the double-role film Banarasi Babu in 1973. 
He delivered commercial hits again with young heroines like with Sharmila Tagore in Ye Gulistan Hamara, with Yogita Bali and Rocky in Banarasi Babu with Hema Malini in Chuppa Rustam and Amir Garab with Zenat Aman in Hira Panna Warrant Calabaz and Darling Darling and with Parveen Babi in Bullet .The presence of his discoveries in the 1970s, Zenot, and later Tina Munam, in films and his good on-screen chemistry with beautiful young stars such as Rocky, Parveen Bobby, Hema Malini and Zenot Aman in various films boosted Dev's image as the evergreen star even though he was well into his fifties, he attempted different genres of films so acquired versatile hero image. He was already 55 when he was paired with Tina Munam in 1978 in De Pardes, which became among the top five grossing films of the year. Political activism during the emergency in the late 1970s Dev Anand has also been politically active. He led a group of film personalities who stood up against the internal emergency imposed by the then Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi. He actively campaigned against her with his supporters in Indian parliamentary elections in 1977. He also formed a party called the National Party of India which he later disbanded. <laughs> later career and evergreen hero image The 1978 hit De Pardes, directed by Dev Anand was the debut movie of actress Tina Munam and this film's success gave him the tag of the evergreen hero. Dev Anand was offered the lead role in Man Pasand by director Basu Chatterjee. Dev Anand's successful run at the box office continued in the 1980s with Man Pasand, Lutmar both opposite Tina Munam and Swami Dada 1982, all being critically acclaimed and box office hits. Though Dev Anand's demand as the lead hero had not decreased even in the 1980s, he decided that it was the right time to introduce his son Sunil Anand in films as the hero. He launched his son in the Kramer vs. Kramer inspired Anand Aur Anand 1984, which was produced and directed by Dev Anand himself and had music by R.D. Berman. He expected the film to do well, but the film was a box office disaster and Sunil Anand decided not to act in films anymore. But films with Dev Anand as the lead hero in Hum Nojawan 1985 and Lashkot 1989 continued to be box office successes and were appreciated by critics. Awal No. 1990, where Dev Anand co-starred with Aditya Panchali and Amir Khan became an average grocer in the year 1990. Amir said in an interview that Awal No. is the only film he signed without reading the script because it was being directed by his senior Dev Anand. Amir quoted, Dev Saab was an icon for many generations and entertained us throughout his life. He was already 60 years old in 1983 when he acted opposite Christine O'Neill and alongside Ratti Agnihotri and Padmini Kolhapur in Swami Dada. In 1989, his directorial venture Sachchi Ka Bolbala was released. Though critically acclaimed, it was a commercial failure. His performance as Professor Anand in the 1989 film Lashka film was widely appreciated and was a major success at the box office. He acted opposite young actors such as Sumit Segal, Hemant Burji, Javed Jaffari, Sanam and Madhavi. Lashka was his last hit film in the lead role in 1989, with him neither being producer nor director of the film. He directed Pyar Ka Tarana in 1993, without casting himself in any role. His directorial movie Gangster 1995 had a controversial nude rape scene of an unknown actress, though the movie was released uncut. He received offers to star in lead role in outside of his home banners in films like Return of Jewel Thief and Aman K. Farishte but the former was not successful at the box office and the latter wasn't released in 1993 though the film was fully ready to be released. Since 1992, seven of his directorial ventures were box office failures. His films Sao Kroor 1991 and Censor 2000 were critically acclaimed. His performance and direction in the 1991 film Sao Kroor was appreciated as it was a movie ahead of its time dealing with real-life murder of badminton star Syed Modi and the arrest being made of the wife and her ex-lover. His last film Charge Sheet 2011 was panned by critics across the board. 
He also starred in English films such as The Evil Within 1970, where he was paired opposite Vietnamese actress Kiu Chin and Zenot Amon and Guide English version. The English-language film The Evil Within was a 20th-century Fox production which couldn't get the nod from the concerned authorities due to its parallel track dealing with opium selling and thus the Indian viewers were deprived of this American venture. Of the 114 Hindi films he appeared in in six decades, Kahan Aur Chal had a delayed release in the early 1970s and the multi-star film Ek Du Teen Char remained unreleased and Shrimanji had him in a guest appearance. By 2011, he had the second most solo lead roles in Hindi films—92, with Rajesh Khanna having the record for the most films as solo lead hero in Hindi films 106. Topic. Comparisons with Gregory Peck Often compared to the famous actor Gregory Peck the world over, Dev Anand said that he didn't feel ecstatic hearing the tagline bestowed on him in his heyday, "...when you are at an impressionable age you make idols, but when you grow out of the phase, you develop your own persona. I don't want to be known as India's Gregory Peck, I am Dev Anand." Acquainted with the Bollywood actor, Peck's personal interactions with him spanned four to five long meetings in Europe and Mumbai. Dev Anand and Saraya met Peck for the first time at Mumbai's Willingdon Club, after the Filmfare Awards in 1954, on Peck's stopover from a schedule at Sri Lanka after shooting for the Purple Plane. He knew of the Indian star as an actor, more so probably because his romance with Saraya was grabbing the headlines, and they had a chat. The second time they met was in Rome when Dev Anand was on his way back from the Venice Film Festival. He visited him on the set of Roman Holiday. I was returning from the Venice Film Fest. I stopped my car and joined the crowd watching the shoot, hoping that his eyes would fall on me. As expected, he nodded and I walked up to him. He remembered me and we exchanged pleasantries. The third meeting was at London on the set of Moby Dick. However, Saraya asked for an exclusive meeting with her idol at her house. Though Anand says jealousy was natural for anyone in love, he didn't mind that he was not invited. I didn't quite feel anything. It wasn't as if they were going to fall in love or make love. Even if they would have, it wouldn't have mattered. I was mature enough. Moreover, he wasn't my rival. I too was a big star by then, says Anand. Topic. Critical appraisal Dev Anand has directed 19 films and produced 35 films. Off the 35 films he produced, 18 were commercially successful at the box office and off the 19 films directed by him 10 were hits. He wrote the stories for 13 of his films. Critics say his directorial ventures have always been ahead of their time. Dev Anand's films are well known for their hit songs. He is known to have been an active participant in the music sessions of a number of his films. His association with music composers Shankar J. Kishan, O. P. Nayar, Kalyanji Anandji, Sachin Dev Burman and his son Rahul Dev Burman, lyricists Hazrat Jaipuri, Majru Sultanpuri, Gopaldas Neeraj, Shailendra, Anand Bakshi, and playback singers Muhammad Rafi, Hemant Kumar and Kishore Kumar produced some very popular songs. Muhammad Rafi, Pran, Kishore Kumar, S. D. Berman, and R. D. Berman were his closest friends from the film industry. In September 2007, Dev's autobiography Romancing with Life was released at a birthday party with the Indian Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh. In February 2011, his 1961 black and white film Hum Dono was digitized, colorized, and re released. Dev Anand is credited with giving actors such as Zarina Wahab in ISHQ ISHQ ISHQ, Jackie Shroff in Swami Dada, Tabu in Hum Nojawan and Richa Sharma Sanjay Dutt's first wife a break in the film industry, discovering Zenat Aman, Tina Munam and encouraging music composer Rajesh Roshan. Amit Khanna started his career with Navkitan as executive producer in 1971 and had been secretary to Dev Anand in the 1970s. He adds. The uniqueness of Navkitan today is that it's the only film company in the world still run by the one who started it." Shatrugan Sinha disclosed in an interview that it was Dev Anand who gave him a break in films by giving him a role in Prem Pujari and since Dev had given Sinha a very small role in that film, he compensated for it by giving Sinha another role in his next film Gambler. 
Sinha quoted, "...later on we worked together in Sharif Budmash and it was really a privilege to work with him." It was under Dev Anand's Navkitan banner where Guru Dutt, Raj Khosla, Wahida Rahman, S.D. Berman, J. Dev, Sahir Ludianvi, Majru Sultanpuri, Yash Johar, Shakar Kapur and Kabir Bedi were given breaks into Hindi films and Dev launched actors Zahira, Zahida Hussain, Zarina Wahab, Natasha Sinha, Ekta Sohini and Sabrina. Dev Dev Anand died in his room at the Washington Mayfair Hotel in London at the age of 88 on 3 December 2011 of a cardiac arrest. His death came just months after the release of his last film charge sheet. Anand was reportedly in London for a medical checkup at the time of his death. On 10 December, his funeral service was held at a small chapel in London after which his casket was taken to the Putney Vale Crematorium in southwest London. His ashes were returned to India for immersion burial in the Godavari River. <laughs> <laughs> Awards, honours and recognitions The Government of India honoured him with the Padma Bhushan in 2001 and the Dadasaheb Phalke Award in 2002 for his contribution to Indian cinema. His career spanned more than 65 years, acting in 114 Hindi films, of which 92 had him play the main solo lead hero, and he did two English films. He was the recipient of the Filmfare Award for Best Actor for his performances in Kala Pani and Guide, the latter being India's official entry to the Oscars. Civilian <inaudible> <inaudible> Award <inaudible> 2001 Padma Bhushan India's third highest civilian award from the government of India Topic <laughs> <laughs> National Film Awards Winner 1965 National Film Award for Best Feature Film in Hindi for Guide 2002 Dadasaheb Phalke Award India's highest award for cinematic excellence Topic. Filmfare Awards Winner 1959 Best Actor for Kala Pani 1967 Best Film for Guide 1967 Best Actor for Guide 1991 Filmfare Lifetime Achievement Award Topic. National Honours and Recognitions 1995 Star Screen Lifetime Achievement Award 1997 Mumbai Academy of Moving Images Award for his outstanding services to the Indian film industry 1998 Lifetime Achievement Award by the Uhala Anandlok Film Awards Committee in Calcutta 1999 Sansui Lifetime Achievement Award for his immense contribution to Indian cinema in New Delhi 2000 Film Goers Mega Movie Maestro of the Millennium Award in Mumbai 2001 Special Screen Award for his contribution to Indian cinema 2001 Evergreen Star of the Millennium Award at the Z Gold Bollywood Awards on 28 April 2001 at the Nassau Coliseum, New York 2003 Lifetime Achievement Award for Outstanding Achievement in Indian Cinema at IIFA Award in Johannesburg, South Africa 2004 Legend of Indian Cinema Award at Atlantic City, United States. 2004 Living Legend Award by the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Fitchi, in recognition of his contribution to the Indian entertainment industry. 2005 Sony Gold Award. 2006 ANR National Award by the Akineni International Foundation. 2006 Glory of India Award by IIAF, London. 2007 Punjab Ratan Jewel of Punjab Award by the World Punjabi Organization European Division for his outstanding contribution in the field of art and entertainment. 2008 Lifetime Achievement Award by Ramya Cultural Academy in association with Vin Music Club. 2008 Lifetime Achievement Award by Rotary Club of Bombay. 2008 Awarded at the IIJS Solitaire Awards. 
2009 Outstanding Contribution to Indian Cinema at the Max Stardust Awards 2009 Legend Award given to Deva Nand by Regina Kanth 2010 Falk Ratna Award by Dadasaheb Falk Academy 2010 Rashtriya Gaurav Award 2011 Rashtriya Kishore Kumar Salmon from the Government of Madhya Pradesh 2011 NDTV Indian of the Year's Lifetime Achievement Award with Rahul Dravid Lifetime Achievement Maestro Award by the Whistling Woods International Institute 2013 to honor him, a brass statue in his likeness was unveiled at Walk of the Stars at Bandra Bandstand in Mumbai in February 2013. 2013 on the occasion of 100 years of the Indian cinema, a postage stamp bearing his likeness was released by India Post to honor him on 3 May 2013. <laughs> International honors and recognitions In July 2000, in New York City, he was honored by an award from the hands of the then First Lady of the United States of America, Hillary Clinton, for his "...outstanding contribution to Indian cinema". In 2000, he was awarded the Indo-American Association, "...star of the millennium", award in Silicon Valley, California. Donna Ferrer, member of the New York State Assembly, honored him with a "...New York State Assembly citation", for his outstanding contribution to the cinematic arts worthy of the esteem and gratitude of the great state of New York." On 1 May 2001. In 2005, he was honored with a "...special national film award," by the government of Nepal at Nepal's first national Indian film festival in Stockholm. In 2008, he was guest of honor at a dinner hosted by the Provost of Highland Council in Inverness, Scotland to celebrate ten years since he first worked in the Scottish Highlands. He spent several days in the area, en route to Cannes, as a guest of the Highlands and Islands Film Commission. Filmography <laughs> 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 Topic. Further reading Cinema Modern, Navkeaton Story, by Siddharth Bhatia. HarperCollins, 2011. ISBN 978-93-5029-096-5. Evergreen Deva Nand, an anthology of Deva Nand's contribution to cinema, by Kamal Deeman. Nikita Publications, 2014. ISBN 978-81-930290-2-2